There are many things in the world of sport and training that are really intense details that have a lot of individual variability and a lot of things to think about and are really worth agonising over, but warming up is not really one of them. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about how I warm up for my training and it's really quite simple. <laughs> But I want to start with the caveat that what I'm going to say works for most people most of the time. There are some exceptions and people who do need more specific and more complex and more extensive warm-up protocols, usually because of some other underlying health condition. And that's also one of the core messages of this post is that if you look after your general health, then a, such an intense warm-up becomes less important. Not It's always important to do a warm-up but you don't maybe need to warm up for as long um, or have as many activities included in it if your general health is good. The purpose of the warm up is just to prepare the body for the workout ahead. Ideally, once you've completed your warm up, your body will be performing as well as it can be. It will minimize your probability of injury during the session and it will also allow you to focus and concentrate on the tasks in the session itself. Specifically, what it has to do is literally increase the temperature of the muscles to bring the muscles and tendons to their optimal working temperature. But maybe more important than that, the purpose is to focus the main body as one connected unit on the movements that you're going to do in the session and executing those as well and as safely as possible. I would also like to say that I don't think there's evidence to support that there's any one correct way to warm up. There are many, many different ways to warm up and if you have a way that works for you and feels good, then that's great. There's probably no need to change it. I think the biggest real mistake you can make with warming up is just not warming up at all. And people do this all the time and end up getting injured. My first stage in warming up is actually to go to my kettle and make a cup of tea. And the reason I make a cup of tea is that that is part of my warm up routine. And the routine is doing the same thing every time helps to prepare my mind for the idea that I am about to do a workout now. One of the biggest problems with preparing for a workout is many people in the Western world are the thing they're doing before their workout is sitting in front of a screen or doing something inactive. And also they're stressed and concentrating on other things and not thinking about the exercise they're, they're about to do. So one of the big purposes of the warm up, and maybe an underrated one, is that it actually refocuses your mind away from those activities and on to what you're going to do. If you want to do a general cardio pulse raiser to increase your general body temperature, that's totally fine. I don't personally do that. I just go straight onto the wall and climb. Now, I don't really know why this is not favored as a first step for actually uh, warming up, actually getting on the wall and just doing some climbing. I think potentially one reason could be that for relative beginners, novice climbers, who have less well-developed technique, um, less precision in their movements, just may be more at risk of making movement errors. They also may be less strong and less physically conditioned generally. All of that is an argument for doing more moves, getting better technique and getting better general physical conditioning. But I think as long as you stick to two rules, which is to keep your movement technique nice and clean with good concentration and also to stick to start on really, really easy climbing, then I think going straight to the wall and starting to climb is just fine. I do this on the biggest holes in my wall, which are really, really big jugs and handles. And I don't put my rock shoes on before I do that. I just start to move around the wall on jugs. As I move around those big holes, I gradually feel my body warming up. I gradually feel the, the energy coming for the workout where I feel like I want to pull harder and I'm ready to move quicker with more precision and more concentration. And that's exactly what I'm after. Also during this time, I'm trying to notice my recovery state. I'm trying to notice how well my body is climbing, how strong my muscles feel, how fresh I feel, how concentrated I feel, or whether I feel conversely tired or sore or anything like that, because that allows me to adjust my decisions for what I'm actually going to do in the session ahead. And that, again, is maybe one of the most important aspects of the warm up itself. The next thing I do is put my rock shoes on and start to do just slightly more difficult climbing, usually on a steeper wall, but still on massive jugs. And quite often I'll climb up and back down and back up problems. And I'll do them in a really relaxed, controlled way, 
not really pulling hard just yet, but just focusing on nice clean movement, focusing on my footwork, and again, reading how my body feels and what it's ready for in the session ahead. Then I might progress to doing bits of slightly harder problems, that is a few moves on a harder problem. Again, in a slightly non-committal way where I'm not really pulling super hard, but um, I might step onto a kind of more mid-grade problem. The whole time reading how my body feels, does it feel good? Does it feel rested? Does it also feel ready to start to step up to the next level? And once I've done a few problems and I feel ready to step to the next level, then I move to a harder problem and a harder problem. Many people add stretching to their warm-up routine and I don't personally do that myself. One of the reasons for that is I actually climb in quite cold conditions. It's about zero degrees in my climbing wall right now because it's nearly winter. And so stretching in really cold conditions um, is not all that effective really for the muscle. It helps for the muscle to already be warm to stretch. So I actually tend to do my stretching after my workout in my own house where it's nice and warm and I can relax and my muscles feel ready for stretching. With that said, the climbing itself stretches the muscle. It stretches the muscle tendon unit when it's under load so it performs that purpose. So it's not as if by not doing specific stretching exercises you're not getting any stretching. And the ambient temperature of the place you're climbing, whether that's outdoors or in a climbing wall, does have a bit of a bearing on the risk of injury uh, during the session and I think there's a bit of a trade-off here. So on one hand, exercising in the cold can increase the risk of a muscle tear or a tendon tear, but on the flip side, Climbing in cold conditions generally means less slipping or under greasy holds and so it can be safer to climb in. So my general feeling is that providing a proper warm-up has been done, then climbing in the cold is actually the safest place you can be. And I personally hate climbing in overheated climbing walls in, in cities in the summer. I think there are, that is one of the most risky times for getting an injury that you can get. And in fact, almost all of the finger injuries that I've ever had in all my fingers have occurred in that situation. And I don't think any of them have ever occurred in climbing in the cold. So actually, if you're climbing in a hot climbing wall, during your warm up, you might actually have to be aware of overheating your body. <laughs> Easy, not even pumped. <laughs> and quite often after I've done my warm up in a hot climbing wall, I might actually go and step outside into the cool to let my skin cool down and prepare me to do harder climbs in greater safety. Once I've completed that progression of steadily increasing climbs from super easy on jugs right through to pretty hard climbs, then I carry right on with my session. I find that the total amount of time required for my warm up changes throughout the year, changes depending on my recovery state. I tend to listen closely to my body in order to dictate that rather than um, imposing some arbitrary number of minutes or climbs that, that I do. And one thing that I also do is if I get to the end of my warm-up process and I still don't feel good and I still feel a bit tired, a bit sore, a bit tweaky, then I just stop. So in summary, be disciplined about doing your warm-up, but don't needlessly overcomplicate it. Start really, really easy on the biggest jugs in the climbing wall and then progress through harder and harder climbs until you feel that you're ready to pull hard. And then go and enjoy your session. And I'll see you in the next video.